While President Biden is at Camp David for the start of the holiday weekend, back on the Hill, Congress is trying to figure out a debt ceiling deal before that deadline fast approaching on June 5th. And the vice president giving the keynote speech at West Point's graduation ceremony. Watch. Our military is strongest when it fully reflects the people of America. You graduate into an increasingly unsettled world where long-standing principles are at risk. Our military is a force. The power of America's military, it rests on the character and the resolve of our people. Now, the last time she gave a commencement address at a military academy, she joked about roll-up solar panels and, well, it didn't land. Remember this? Just ask any Marine today, would she rather carry 20 pounds of batteries or a rolled up solar panel? And I am positive she will tell you a solar panel. And so would he. I'm Well, I'm not so sure about that. I watched and looked at the remarks, guys, uh, from the address at West Point today, and it did not appear from what I could see that she used any Venn diagram, but I'm not sure that the cadets were quite as uh, motivated as when they have their military leaders. Like last year, it was Joint Chief of Staff General Mark Milley, and who could theoretically be their commander, sending him off to faraway dangerous places to fight for our freedom, which is, of course, what we uh, uh, recognize this specific Memorial Day weekend. But let's start with you, Sarah, and go around. What did you make of Vice President Harris's speech? Look, I, I, I think the West Point cadets uh, probably did not expect to get Vice President Harris. Like you said, they probably were not very excited about this. Um, my husband's in the military. This is Memorial Day weekend. I think that the military has had a lot to uh, deal with over the last year or two, and especially right now with wokeness in the military and a lot of issues that the military is facing, having Vice President Kamala Harris there, um, look, she didn't do as terrible of a, of a job as she has in the past, but it's not like getting Admiral McRaven and his speech about making a bed or, you know, that feeling of like, we're really challenging the future because, frankly, it is the Biden administration that opened up the floodgates, in my opinion, to both Russia and China, to our adversaries, that have emboldened them to kind of take advantage and push our nation really on the brink, some would say, of World War III. Mm -hmm. So uh, if, if anything, I think they should have had somebody else. They should have had a general there, somebody that they could have looked up to, somebody that, that would motivate them for the future. And that's just my two cents. Timmy, I'll come to you. I mean, look, we have the smallest fighting force we've had in decades. Yeah. And those cadets know it. We don't talk a lot about it in the national news as much as we should, I think. But they know full well. And so perhaps when she's telling them you're going out into an unsettled world, there would have been some sort of really rally. If she's going to take mm -hmm. the, the baton and give the speech, you got to rally the troops and give them the assurance that they're going to be on the front line and they're going to have what they need. And, you know, look, this is when you think and I heard when I heard that and when they heard that everyone's thinking, well, that's your fault. Yeah. Right. This is an increasingly unsettled world uh, the, the Trump administration showed uh, everybody that you can get things done without a lot of boots on the ground, that you can kill the enemy. You can get missiles into windows and get Soleimani and get al-Baghdadi. And uh, you, so we know how to do things. The military knows how to do things when they're allowed to do the things they need to do. Uh, and, you know, so the wokeness is part of the problem. It's not just, you know, what we need on the field, but it's about recruitment in general as well. People, uh, the, the recruitment numbers are horribly down. You've got people looking at, well, who is the commander in chief? Who is the vice president? And it's, and it, it's like virtue signaling. It's yeah. still stuck in virtue signaling. And that then reverberates to the, all those, thank God that they're at West Point and mm -hmm. that they've made their commitment. Uh, but, of course, people are concerned about the military, the brass, what young people like that are being taught and what the impact will be when they're really needed to have to deliver. Raymond, I think you want to weigh in. Well, t uh, just picking up on what Tammy said, it's worse than virtue signaling. It really is using the military and our young cadets at West Point to raise the profile of Kamala Harris, who we have to say everything she's been entrusted with, everything 
is an abject disaster. She's the border czar. The border's not under control. The border's not under control. She's the czar. She, the Voting Rights Act didn't get passed, and yep. most notoriously, she is our science czar as well at oh, the no. National Science oh, Institute. Great. If it weren't for Elon Musk, we'd have no rockets in the air. All right. So th this is a sad display from someone with Wait, very little to commend herself. We, and the speech was a mess. She started giggling during innovation. Today. Are we being right. too mean on her right. though? Because in fairness, no. No. Uh, her boss hasn't really done quite as great of a job. Here is a quick flashback mm. of President <laughs> Biden's addresses to graduates. But all kidding aside, of course, President Harris is a proud Howard alum. She might have something to say about Delaware State. I can only assume that you will enjoy educating your family about how the Coast Guard is, quote, the hard nucleus around the Navy forms in times of war. You are quite, you're a really dull class. I mean, come on, man. Is the sun getting to you? Come on, Sarah. Oh, come oh. on, man. Look, I, I covered the war. I was in Afghanistan and Iraq. I spent a lot of time on the ground with our troops. And, and just to take a serious note right now, because we could, we could be making fun of this, which we should, but this is Memorial Day weekend. And we lost so many men and women, you know, in the fight to uh, to keep our country safe and to aspire to those values, uh, those principles that our founding fathers established that make our nation the envy of the world. You know, so it is it is sad that we have, you know, the borders are the failed borders are out there talking to our troops and. Afghanistan, I can tell you this, a lot of troops right now are upset with this administration. A lot of them kind of retired on the job or left, you know, their posts because of what happened in Afghanistan and that horrible withdrawal. Let's leave it there. That's a good point. I appreciate that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.